Unity of Houston is an inclusive church where we seek to understand and live the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. At Unity, we welcome all people from all spiritual paths and every walk of life. We celebrate the diversity of our city and of our world, and we teach love, tolerance, and oneness, seeking to live in harmony with open minds and open hearts. Wherever you are in your spiritual path, you are always welcome at Unity. Join us and discover that the life of your dreams is already within you. Isn't that just what we needed to hear today? We made it to Sunday. Yes. Like it's, it's warmer. It's feeling like Houston again. That's one of those songs that I, I've heard Kenneth sing it um, before, and it comes to me. There's music from this ministry that just comes to me, and, and it's the Spirit speaking to me. Um, that's one of those. I don't know if that's, that's for you, but I imagine there is music from this ministry that, that shows up in times when we really need it. And so grateful we could, we could have that song this morning. I'm going to be sharing with you a message about the path of friendship, philia. This is part of the series that we have been doing on Sundays in February to live in love. February, the month of love. And Reverend Michael started the series. He shared about, so these are the four Greek words for love that, uh, that are Bible-based. Storge, the familial love. There's eros, that is that intimate love of, of passion. And what I'm sharing about is philia, the friendship love, brotherly, sisterly love. Eros is more of like a face-to-face one-on-one -on -one love. Friendship is like a side-by-side -side love, brotherly, sisterly, like Philadelphia. This is, comes from that word philia, the city of brotherly love, or we even use that, uh, that word philia in words like anglophile, love, the love of British things, or francophile, French things, or bibliophile. Uh, books, which would be books. I don't think that there is a word for unity, a uni unity oh, file. <laughs> we call ourselves unitics sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, but that's, I guess, what, what maybe we would be if we were to assign that, that word to ourselves. Friendship. I want to know how you experienced friendship this week. It's amazing in the midst of tragic events how um, people will give, be even sacrificial in their giving and showing how we care and support each other. And in, in regular times, sometimes that, that goes away. And why is that? And can we keep that energy of love and friendship going through, through all times? I'm amazed at how many people reached out to me uh, this week. And it, and it felt so loving. And I hope that that happened for you if you were in um, this winter condition. And if not, you know your church is here for you. And we're always that friend to support you and love, love you and, and pray for you. Uh, this week, now Reverend Michael has been sharing these stories about Greek gods and mythology, and this week felt kind of mythical to me. I don't know about you guys, but it felt like one of those mythology stories where the gods are looking down at the mortals, and they're looking down at us, and they're saying, oh, well, they dealt with the pandemic. Let's see. Let's... Let's throw a winter storm. Snow in Houston. That would be great. Snow in Houston will take away their power. Their, their water is still in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, make them freeze. And, and let's just see what, what happens. And they're just laughing it up, right? <laughs> I mean, we know God doesn't work this way. But this kind of gives us some insight into the Greeks and the ancients and why they made up these stories to try to understand what was happening in the universe and, and why is this happening? Well, it, it must be a creation of the gods. Well, I'll share something from, also from Greek theater is a, um, a device, a theatrical device that's called deus ex machina. And that's when you see 
there's a situation in a Greek play that they just can't resolve. No human being in the play can figure out how to solve this situation. And some person or thing just shows up, and this is the deus ex machina, or deus meaning God, like a God-like thing that just solves the problem. And uh, so I'm kind of wondering if you had something like that this week. We did. We did. This was a week of pilgrimage. I'm curious if it was for you. It was for us. We Unexpected. Monday is my day off, and I thought, I'm going to work on my talk. I'm going to dig into the Bible. I'm going to dig into my books. I'm going to meditate. going to pray. I'm going to be all centered and ready, you know, all prepared way in advance for Sunday. And <laughs> then school got canceled. The storm came. We have no power. We're freezing. And suddenly it goes from being spiritual, spiritual mode to um, you know, almost panic mode. Okay, we thought we were prepared, and now we're seeing our breath inside of our house. This is not good. And we tried different things. We lit candles, then discovered after hours of candles being lit around the house, I blew my nose, and there was soot <laughs> that came out of my nose. Blow out the candles, blow out the candles. We made soup, we figured out how to light our gas stove and we made some soup and thinking every time we make soup, it just feels like the whole house is warm. Not this time, <laughs> just where the pot was, was warm and we're trying to warm ourselves and we're eating soup and we're just doing everything we think we can do. And, um, and then just this act of friendship showed up for us of uh, grace and we we're just so grateful. We we're trying to figure out what what we're going to do and how we're going to proceed. And, and many people we knew also had no power and were freezing. And uh, friends from the congregation, and uh, I don't want to say their names because I didn't ask them if it was OK to share that, but they know who they are. And, um, and we're so grateful, reached out to us and just heard about our situation. And they had power. And we're so grateful that they opened their home to us in the middle of a pandemic, as well as a winter storm. And to not only David and I, or our five-year-old daughter, and our dog, and gratefully, their dog got along well with our dog, and they, they fed us just so well, and they engaged us in this just loving conversation. And it's amazing how when you just connect with others and, and just open your heart in these situations, how you find your common ground, that there's always a common ground between all of us. And when we just take the time to meet, discuss, get to know each other, and that, that comes forward in such a beautiful way, that is that familial, that, that filial uh, friendship, not familial, <laughs> but philia, that friendship, love that we got to experience. They, they gave us a nice warm bed and, and when we were, we were good until their power went out Monday night and then Tuesday we were trying to figure out what to do and we were trying to get on work meetings, couldn't get on the meetings and uh, everybody's trying to get together. We go home, we have power, then we lose power. Then we go to David's parents, they have power. We stay there Tuesday night. Uh, they lose power Tuesday night. We come home Wednesday, and finally Wednesday. We get power. We get power back, and then we're, we're having the energy to reach out to friends and say, "Hey, how are you doing? What can we do?" We, we made a, a little winter shelter for a stray cat in our backyard, and we're just trying to figure out what can we do to be that helping hand. That's that love when we help each other. Um, so, how can we continue that? what we have within us that naturally wants to care and help and be a friend and reach out in all times, we consider that. So instead of sharing with you a, a Greek mythology story, because maybe we had enough of a dose of that in real life, <laughs> I want to share with you a story from, it's from uh, second century Mahayana Buddhism. And it's a story of a great god, their god, that was akin to Thor, Thunder God, or Zeus, you know, the god of the gods, was, um, was called Indra. And Indra lived in the heavens. And 
in the, the beautiful place that this God lived. An artisan had created a, a piece of work for him. And the work was this net, and it's called, we, it's referred to as Indra's net. And what's amazing about this net, of course, the net of gods, is that it expands out into infinity. So it just, you, you just can't see the end of it. And at the node of each part of this net is a jewel. And what's amazing about these jewels is that when you look into the smooth face of the jewel, you see reflected in the jewel all the other jewels that are on the net, which go forward into infinity, right? Reflected in this jewel. And in each of those jewels, this jewel is reflected. So there's just infinite reflections in this net. And so this story, I came across it as a symbol that is used in soul collage. I'm, um, one of the facilitators of Soul Collage is a class that we're offering here where, where we come together in community and create cards, collage cards that reflect different parts of ourselves. And so we recognize through the net that all of our friends, all of our connections, everyone really is present in us, is a reflection in us, and they reflect us. And that's what friendship is, reflecting each other's light to each other and honoring what makes our light unique, right? And what makes their light unique. And that's genuine friendship. I think one of the things that we come into when we enter into a possibility of friendship is, do I have to change to be that person's friend or to be part of that group? And am I willing to change? What is it that they're gonna expect of me? That's something that I think I went through a lot in my teenage years, is how am I going to carve myself into what these people would like so I could be their friend? But genuine friendship is really where you come into it in your authenticity and all that you are, and that you're welcomed then in as that. And of course, coming from kindness, coming from, from uh, compassion and finding that common bond. And there's always something. Of course, in unity, our common bond is, is our church, right? Finding that connection, that common um, ground that we create friendship from. <laughs> so knowing yourself, knowing yourself as that many-faceted jewel, that is where friendship begins. The greatest gift is that we can give to friendship is really to be ourselves, to honor, to honor the uniqueness in that person. And so the true belonging that we're creating here in unity is a belonging that is based on honoring each other for who we are and not trying to make somebody change into something that they're not. So how do you shift from being an outsider to feeling that you belong, to having friends? That's one of the biggest things that I hear about people when they first come to Unity, is I, I'm coming, I come to church or watching live stream, especially now that we're live streaming, and how do I get in? Uh, we were, my husband and I were part of a church, our, our church that we came into in New York where they had this reputation for being, people were saying they were cliquish, like there was an in-group and then there was everybody else. And so we were going there a couple of years before we went to a winter retreat. And we went to this winter, this is the first time we engaged in the community, right, besides showing up to service, shaking hands on Sunday, you know, saying hello and, and leaving. But we actually did something. And we started making friends because we were, we engaged. We chose something and a way to connect. And so that's how I think that when I see people who they come into our community and they get connected right away, it's because they're not waiting for somebody to ask them. They're not waiting to be invited into a class or a group or a way to volunteer. They're finding a need and they're inserting themselves there. How can I volunteer and, and you put me where I'm needed? Or jumping into like, classes or spirit groups, finding ways to connect. And that's how we create spiritual friendships and community. By 
maybe getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and doing something where you might be in a group of people you don't know and you'll find in unity that quickly we get to know each other and quickly we form community together and we are wanting to know you. So Jesus said um, that there is no greater love than this to lay down one's lives for our friends. And so we hear this and we may think to die for our friends, but that's not what this scripture passage means. It is to care for our friends as we care for ourselves. So it may be to lay down our lives is to put aside our differences so that we can find our connection, to find what it is that we can do to help because we want to find, um, you know, how to find healing. We're doing this amazing work in Unity Worldwide Ministries. I'm on the board. I'm grateful to be on the board right now. And the, one of the top priorities for our strategic plan is to dismantle systemic racism in unity. And it, it's like, where do, you, where do you start? Well, you start by having being open and having conversations and facilitated by somebody who is trained and knows what they're doing and we have an, an, a specialist who's working with the board so that we can have those difficult conversations and share what it is that, um, that we've been holding on uh, that, that is a societal conditioning that we may be often unconscious of so we can bring that to light so that we can bring healing so creating greater connection and friendships can involve having difficult conversations, laying down your life of maybe what you've known of your life so that you can take on a new life that has a greater web, that has where more of those jewels are reflected in you and you're reflecting more in them. I saw people laying down their lives here in this community during Hurricane Harvey. People were got together and were mucking out houses. That is nasty work. <laughs> that is dangerous work. And many of those people had their own ha problems with their own houses. And why do we do that? Why do we put ourselves into that line of, of even endangering ourselves to help others? Some people do it because they, um, they want to be recognized and seen for being good people. But many people do it because they recognize there's, there's a need for help and they want to reach out, and they want to help. That's what motivates that. That's what motivates that. So thinking about how you reached out to others and the ways that you have given in times of tragedy, and how can that continue where you remember to reach out to those who are not near you, who you love, and show how much you care, and that's that friendship, love. You know, one of the most important things about friendship is enjoying your time together. We haven't had as many celebrations as we normally get to do at Unity. You know, this year, one of the things that we did, we had a, uh, Unity Women had a tea party where we just, we were online and we had these different themes and we dressed up and we, we just had fun having tea together and connecting and, uh, and that's the kind of thing that we do as friends, right? How have you been doing that during the pandemic and connecting with your friends and just to have fun, just to connect and just to show that you care? Jesus said in the Gospel of John, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. And so he said love, right, and not like. So there may be some things that you don't like about another but, uh, but can we find a place where we come to love, where we come to love? And that same gospel after Jesus had the Last Supper, the entry in the gospel there is the disciples start wondering, who is the greatest among us? Who will they say will be the greatest among us? This is what they're asking Jesus after he's had the Last Supper. And Jesus says to him, says to them, the greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like one who serves. And so true friendship is looking to give rather than receive, is looking to be that 
brother and sister to another to connect, to find our common ground so we can create greater community together. And so let's go forward and do this as we turn to prayer, as we turn to God and we know that we are so grateful for this spiritual community that connects us like an infinite net of beautiful jewels. Each person, a shining example of God. We open our hearts even greater to those we don't yet know, but want to know. Trusting that God is guiding us in a way that brings understanding, that brings healing, that allows us to express the true meaning of our name, unity. And so we go forward in faith, knowing that we are on a divine path of discovery together, learning and growing in community and in love. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you for watching this message today. I'd like to invite you to join us in person here on campus at Unity of Houston for Sunday morning or Wednesday evening services. If you can't be with us here on our campus, you can still join us live on Facebook or on our website, unityhouston.org, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Central.